The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS and here's most trusted name in news. My name is Garfield Burford. A warm welcome. And I'm Terry Andrew. Good evening. So let's begin in the Terry. The government is beginning to distribute hundreds of water tanks, free of course, to some of the country's most vulnerable residents. That's right, Terry. It's a major developing story this evening. The government had announced the measure during a cabinet meeting earlier this year to improve water storage and water sustainability across the country. Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown provided the exclusive updates to ABS News this afternoon. The government has actually um, purchased a few hundred um, water tanks, which we'll be distributing um, from today to the vulnerable, the less fortunate. I believe there are about 320 in the first instance, and we will also um, purchase some more in the upcoming weeks. Meanwhile, the head of government also announced a loan program to assist homeowners to improve water storage and sustainability. We have a loan program as well, in which we'll be offering up to $25,000 uh, in loan, unsecured loans, over a period of um, 10 years at 4% and individuals can utilize this loan for home repairs or even to add a cistern to their property or some form of water catchment facility, uh, be it, um, let's say, um, a, a water tank and to spout their property. So this is an added component in order to achieve water sustainability on the island or within the country. While the loan program is being administered through the Ministry of Housing, Lands and Urban Renewal, we asked the Prime Minister when those loans will become available. They're now putting infrastructure in place. I would imagine in a couple of weeks they should be able to have everything in place. Uh, we'll have a bank monitoring the loans for us as well. So on the basis again, get the infrastructure completed uh, within a couple of weeks. Then we'll make funds available to fund those loans. Meanwhile, the government's move to assist residents comes as it provides a progress report on the production of more water. That update came this morning at the official handover of the newly installed unit at the Fries Beach Reverse Osmosis Plant. The project was completed with grant funding from the government of Japan and means the plant is now producing almost twice the amount of water as before. The unveiling of a plaque crystallizing the assistance from the government of Japan, which ensures this plant is producing some 900,000 gallons of water per day, almost two times more than before. This is the new plant, the fourth installed here. All the speakers at Thursday's event praised the government of Japan for its grant funding. The country's ambassador to Antigua and Barbuda beamed with delight when he spoke. The government of Japan recognizes the importance of such bilateral cooperation and reaffirms, reaffirms its commitment to strengthening our relationship with Antigua and Barbuda and the Caribbeans. For APUA General Manager Esworth Martin, the plant's start of operations was met with both delight and relief in equal measure as he chronicled the 17-month delay because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our Japanese friends arrived in, on January 21st, 2022 with a projected end of February commissioning timeline. And through the diligence and collaborative effort with our team, we're able to test by February 15th. The plant has been oper operationalized since, since then, distributing water all the way to others. Now there are plans to further increase production of water from this plant. I've just been in discussions with the Honorable Prime Minister and the water manager. PM says, listen, I want you to produce more. I want you to reach a million, 1.2 million gallons in this area. So we now will be investing an additional arrow plant to boost our production right here at Fry's. Public Utilities Minister Honorable Sir Robin Yearwood outlined production will also be doubled at the Fort James plant, which is now under construction. If you drive to Fort James, you will see where work is going on there now for 500,000 gallons, half a million gallons a day. And yesterday, the leader of this country who cares about his people, he gave instruction to put another 500,000 there. And we placed that order yesterday. He said spare parts have been ordered for all the country's arrow plants to ensure they last longer and produce water optimally. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown said this and other investments in water production and distribution 
are a demonstration of his government's commitment to fixing the country's centuries-old water problem. The fact that APOA <clears throat> is in such financial strength so that it can actually invest over a hundred million dollars to resolve our water problems. And in a sharp retort to political critics, the Prime Minister said his administration has put taxpayers' money where the government's mouth is. We are not passing a buck, you know. I mean, I could stand here and tell you, for example, that the UPP um, in its 10 years added about 400,000 gallons of water. In our eight years, and remember two years, we actually lost as a result of COVID. So effectively in six years, we added over 3 million gallons a day. In excess of 16 times the investment that they made in 10 years. And more to come. So when they want to be critical, let us compare which administration has done more to resolve the water problems and to create water sustainability. It is my administration. No other administration has invested more in achieving water sustainability than my administration. He also made it clear residents should do more to conserve wherever possible and harvest more rainwater. Well, Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown has spoken to ABS News about his appointment to head a United Nations panel of experts on how vulnerable states access official development assistance. But Prime Minister Brown, uh, he spoke with ABS today on the heels of a two-day emergency meeting convened in Antigua to examine the unsustainable debt facing small island developing states. Mugib Aparicio has our story. Eligibility for grant financing has been a significant concern for small island developing states, or SIDS. Prime Minister Brown, who is the chair of the Alliance of Small Island States, or EOSIS, has been a strong proponent for the use of a multidimensional vulnerability index to decide eligibility for concessional financing. This would replace the present criterion of GDP per capita. Prime Minister Brown Brown now also serves as one of two co-chairs for a panel of experts who will propose a change to the United Nations General Assembly. Countries like Antigua and Barbuda, uh, they have been excluded from much in the developmental assistance and uh, we are very happy to be serving on that um, panel in order to um, resolve this inequity and to have, let's say, a, a more workable, a more just MVI which will take into consideration the vulnerabilities of countries like Antigua and Barbuda to determine eligibility for developmental assistance to include ODA. Antigua and Barbuda's permanent representative to the United Nations, Dr. Aubrey Webson, believes there is strong support for the change. We believe we will get it passed now, but then the next step is implementation. So the objective is to work through December, get this up, no, a, a, a passed by the Second Committee and by the General Assembly, and then the work begins again with an implementation. And that's where the advocacy group, and Prime Minister Brown and his group, we believe will close their work in September, October, and then we will work with the committee after that. Rakib Abaris, you're reporting for ABS News. Thanks, Rakib. In other news now, full and regular visiting hours have returned to Celeste Bird Medical Center. The hospital administration has advised that starting today, most patients will now be allowed two visitors at a time at the bedside during visiting hours. Those hours run from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily. All visitors must wear masks but do not need to show proof of vaccination. Now, certain departments, including pediatrics and the intensive care units, have department-specific guidelines. Prospective visitors should check before visiting. In the ICU, for example, loved ones may visit from 11 a.m. to noon and 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. daily. Now, according to the medical director, Dr. Albert Duncan, quote, with all of the positive trends we are seeing in the community and the extra protection afforded by the COVID-19 vaccines, we felt it was time to welcome more visitors back to our hospital. Well, having friends and family members at the bedside is an important part of the healing process, end quote. The latest now on a story ABS News broke last evening. A 23-year-old man remains in hospital in stable condition at this hour after being shot in the left hand by police in suites around 6.15 last evening. Law enforcers are also providing more information on the circumstances which culminated in the incident. Uh, they say they were called to a home in suites where they saw a Jante Brown about whom several reports of threats and malicious damage had been made. 
police say Brown became enraged at their arrival and started to advance towards them while throwing stones and other projectiles. Law enforcers say several attempts were made to bring the situation under control, but Brown continued threatening the lives of family members and the police while causing damage to several properties. Police say they shot him in the hand when he armed himself and started advancing towards them. The wound is not considered to be life-threatening. Well, there is advice for citizens and residents from Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown as the uh, war in Eastern Europe increases inflationary pressures. Consumers are facing higher prices for some goods as the war compounds the global challenges already created by COVID-19. Prices have been surging around the world, a significant challenge for consumers. In the United Kingdom, prices rose by 6.2% in February, their fastest level in 30 years. Meanwhile, in the world's largest economy, the United States, the Federal Reserve's recently increased interest rates by a quarter of 1% to help fight inflation. BBC News says as pandemic restrictions have eased around the world, firms have faced higher energy, shipping and wage costs, which they have passed on to consumers. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is now driving the price of oil and other commodities even higher, according to the BBC. Consumers in this country have been feeling the pinch of imported inflation. The statistical division says the cost of living in Antigua and Barbuda rose by an average 2.9% for the 12 months ending January this year. The food index rose by 6.4% during that period, while for the 12 months up to December last year, it had risen 5.4%. Prime Minister and Finance Minister Honorable Gaston Brown has this advice for residents. They have to buy smart. Eat smart, buy smart, buy local, eat local. That will help to drive down the cost of living. The government has announced that the recent increase in the cost of petrol at the pumps will be reviewed in April, at which time it could be lowered if the variables allow. Well, in this ABS News update, the Health Ministry has postponed the planned return of weekend vaccination at the American University of Antigua AUA campus. PRO for the Health Ministry, Jano Smith-Kelman, explains the reason for the postponement. Due to some construction work taking place there, they have decided to postpone it to the 2nd of April, 2022, at the same venue, same time, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. In the meantime, COVID-19 vaccines remain available at the country's main public health centers. A government-issued ID is required for everyone availing themselves of a jab. An adult must also accompany a minor getting vaccinated. Your original vaccination card is also required for people getting booster shots. I would just like to encourage everyone, once you're eligible, once you're old enough to come out, get vaccinated, protect yourself, protect your family members. Thank you so much for staying with us. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news. Of, well, we'll actually tell you about some more developing stories nationally, including this one. We'll tell you how one man's trash is another's treasure, literally. And later, a musical showpiece returns after a COVID-induced break. We'll give you more details of the Playing to Inspire concert. Coming up on the ABS Evening News, on air and online as the national developments continue. Stay with us. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything your home and the security of your daughter's things and the car that you've had for too long but after all these years you just can't let go at Nagico we're about much more than just insurance we're about the big things and the small things that mean everything no frills just great prices only in courts we don't just talk about it we've got it. Shop with confidence and save big. Up to 50% off appliances, furniture, electronics, and so much more. Plus, pay with ready finance and get one month free. Only at Quartz. Bringing value home. Special conditions apply. Adventure awaits with Frontier Airlines. With Frontier, you can book your dream family trip from Antigua to Orlando, Florida. Make your booking by visiting flyfrontier.com or by giving us a call at 801-401-9000. Fly with Frontier. Low fares done right.
Fellas, we are gathered today to take it to Mr. Johnson. Here are the plans. Captain Flash, you and your men will attack from the kitchen area around 2100 hours, just about when the lights are out. This will give you much needed time to inflict as much damage as possible. Lieutenant Crawley, your platoon will set up camp from the dining tables and living room area where food can be easily found. Me and my men will station around the bathroom area, electrical appliances, and sinks where we will get the shelter food we need. Guys, we can do this. It's a great plan. Let's go. Oh no, it's them again. Men, abort mission, abort mission. Protection guaranteed at Terminix Antigua. Call us today. Thank you so much for staying with us. Time now for a look at new, uh, continuing developments in the national scene. As the country increases its efforts toward a more circular economy, one business is giving people cash for their trash. ABS's Jamie J. Roche tours Will's Recycling for an up-close look at the operations and bringing new life to the saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Workers bailing aluminum and other metal scraps at Wills Recycling in Cooks. It's one way the company processes waste material it collects. The operations are just off the road leading to the landfill and it helps reduce the amount of waste that ends up there. We collect recyclables, mainly metal scrap, to include like your faucets, your old beds, your old fence, chairs, tables, aluminum windows, batteries, motors, compressors. The workers weigh the materials and owner Hassani Williamson says residents can get cash for their waste at rates ranging from 10 cents to $2.50 per pound based on the type of metal. Nonetheless, you can get as much as $70 for one discarded catalytic converter. This granulator processes wires by separating the copper from its insulation. Though the processed metal might glitter, it's just copper, not gold. Nonetheless, there's much value in the operations since it eliminates the need for the old practice of burning the wires to extract the metal. Meanwhile, this worker breaks down a vehicle's transmission, separating the component parts. Ultimately, each type of raw material is packed into containers and exported for use as part of the circular economy model. The metals here, they are exported to manufacturers overseas. The metal is melted down into raw materials. The raw materials is used in the manufacturing process. And that material that is used in the manufacturing process is then used to make consumer items. When we talk about the circular economy, essentially what we're saying, something like this old tank could someday end up in a new life as part of your brand new filing cabinet. Williamson is encouraging everyone to play a role in reducing the country's waste through recycling and other environmentally friendly ways. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. Antiguan Barbuda Youth Symphony Orchestra, Abiso, and the Canny Masons have announced uh, the return of a plane to inspire four, an evening of musical excellence, uh, their flagship musical collaboration. It will take place on Saturday, the 16th of April, 2022, at the St. John's Pentecostal Church, House of Restoration on Lockland Benjamin Drive at 7.30 p.m. and comes after the COVID-19 pandemic forced a two-year break. The concert will feature American conductor Jonathan Hayward, award-winning cellist uh, Ashok Kaluda from Britain, and Antiguan maestro Can Cordes. The concert will be the culmination of a week of workshops and private performances. The week will also include the much-anticipated launch in Antigua 
of Dr. Kadetu Kani Mason's award-winning memoir, House of Music, Raising the Kani Masons. And there will also be a special performance at Lucky Eddie's in English Harbor. Abiso says all COVID-19 health and safety protocols will be observed. It also says these events are meant to provide much needed therapy for the body, mind and soul after the events of the past two years. Well, people had the opportunity to combine soca music and aerobics for a fun-filled activity Wednesday evening. Lions Den came alive with the first soca aerobics event for 2022. Under the watchful eye of fitness phenom Tony the Tiger Jacobs, people spent an hour working up a sweat, exercising to the tune of sweet soca music. The next pop-up class will be on Wednesday, April 6, from 6 to 7 p.m. 20 EC dollars gets you in. Let's stay with some of those pictures, uh, Terry, because uh, they're absolutely amazing, especially uh, coming back from, of course, uh, the situation in relation to COVID-19. The last two years uh, have really been draining on many individuals. And so this is another opportunity for individuals to uh, uh, exhale, literally. And so uh, an, an opportunity for those individuals to uh, really uh, get good exercise while exhaling from, of course, the challenges brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic over the last two years. How, fun, how fascinating that is. And of course, as we've indicated, uh, mm -hmm. The next pop-up class will be Wednesday, the 6th of April from 6 to 7 p.m., 20 EC dollars. Uh, Terry gets one in to that event. You see more dancing than exercising? Indeed. Well, that might as well. Let's tell you about what's coming up right after the break. We'll turn our attention to news overseas. One of those stories that we'll tell you about Barbados' Prime Minister Mia Motley makes a clarion call to the World Trade Organization in relation to the impact of the climate crisis. Also, President Joe Biden warns the U.S. and NATO will respond if Russia uses chemical weapons in Ukraine. Those stories are all ahead for us right here on the ABS Evening News. We'll be right back.